<clears throat> what's up tribe how you guys doing um this is gonna be your cartel crew season one episode six now let me tell y'all something about this episode honey some things went down in this episode now first of all maybe i didn't watch last week's episode all the way to the end like i thought i did or the way they started this off was just a little weird because they started this okay so if you remember the end of the last episode was when Nicole had told everybody um sorry about that because okay so we left off last week when Nicole sort of exposed um Marie's um webcamming activity and stuff and Marie's biggest thing was Michael can't know. Like, if Michael finds out, he's going to kill me. You know what I mean? And so, at the beginning of this episode, we see a scene where Michael was, like, packing his bag and calling her a hoe and all kinds of stuff. And I was like, did that happen last episode and I missed it? So, if I missed it, y'all, I'm sorry. Uh, but neither here nor there, that's what happened. They got into an argument. I don't, I'm pretty certain Marie told him what happened because I guess she figured you need to hear from me before you hear from somebody else. And his response was anger, which I, I could definitely understand that being his first response, being anger and, you know, him wanting to just, you know, be like, I don't want to have nothing to do with this. Because the thing was, that wasn't, a, that he knew about her doing all that before, but the conversation was after the baby, neither one of them was going to do nothing, nothing janky anymore. Like, now that they had their child, they were going to keep everything on the up and up. And so his thing was... Not only were you still doing it after you told me you weren't, but then you lied to me about it. So I definitely can't understand where my, Michael's um, anger is coming from. What I like, though, is that it seems like um, you can definitely see that there's some real relationships going on, right? Because Michael went to go talk to Kat, you know, the, the one that does the tattoos, and... He was like, y'all, I'm really pissed off. He was like, what hell, What the hell happened at that party the other night? And Kat was like, oh, she told you about the party. He was like, yeah. He was like, look, I knew about the webcam. And Kat was like, whoo. Whoo, I'm so glad you knew. Because she was like, you know, that's my homegirl. And I didn't know nothing about it. And I was sitting there thinking, oh, my gosh. You know, what? what what's going to happen when Michael finds out? Like, you could definitely tell that there's some real friendships there. And Michael told her the same thing. He was like, look, I understood you know, he was like, I knew that she was doing it, whatever. But, you know, we had said that after the baby, we weren't going to do any of that. And he was like, my biggest problem is that she lied to me. He was like, I've never lied to her about anything. And we had this conversation and we agreed what we were and weren't going to do as far as, you know, our lifestyle and stuff after the baby. He's not a prude about the situation. He's not even really mad that she was. He was like, look, I get it. Money was funny. I wasn't bringing home a lot of money. I definitely wasn't living that lifestyle that I was used to. She, you know felt like she was trying to contribute to the household in the only way she kind of knew how to do. So it's like, it's funny because he wasn't even mad that she was webcamming. He was mad that she that he didn't tell her and that, I mean, that she didn't tell him and that she felt the need to have to hide it. You know what I mean? And I was like, yo, that's respect. I, I, I was like, they, I, it's a different situation. You know what I'm saying? It's a non-traditional relationship, but it works for them and you definitely can see that there's love and there's respect there. And Marie was broken. Like, she just, I mean, she was crying. She was just, she was done. And the producers asked her, you know, what would life be like without Michael? And she was like, I can't even think about that. I said, oh, man. And, you know, as much as Marie been getting on my nerves these last couple of episodes, I definitely was feeling for her like, damn, you know. Um, especially since he wasn't even mad that she did it. He was just mad that she didn't tell him about it and wasn't honest with him. But the conversation with Kat helped because she basically helped him to see look you know she loves you and you know she wouldn't do anything to hurt you and you know she made a mistake and he was like you know what yeah that's true you know I'm not perfect either I've made mistakes you know and you could definitely the conversation have like one the fact that he went to her and trusted her and two the conversation they had let him understand you know, that this wasn't something that was unforgivable. This wasn't something that was so big that he, one, couldn't understand why she didn't, and two, couldn't sort of respect the situation. So, then we see um, a conversation with um, Los and his mom. I really like Los. I do. But Los is his own worst enemy. Los is, he's arrogant. He can't see anything 
outside of his vision of things. And as a result, that's what's hurting him. The good thing is that he knows it and he's trying to work on it. You know, you could definitely tell there's love between him and his mom. They have a really good relationship and there's just a there's love there. Um and his mom tried to tell him. She was like, look, I keep trying to tell you that you're not perfect. You don't know everything, you know. And when people try to tell you something or try to tell you, you know, something you don't want to hear, then your first reaction is just to get angry and get pissed off about it. And, you know, you get in your own way. And I was like, yeah, pretty much. Yeah, but that's that's about sums it up. But like I said, the good thing is that he knows it. Like, he definitely understands that that's his Achilles heel. The question is, is he going to be able to get out of it before he self-destructs, you know, more? Um, his mom was like, look, I miss my granddaughter. And she basically is like, do whatever the fuck you got to do so I can see my grandchild. Like, I'm not understanding the problem. And, you know, he's still trying to basically put a lot of it back on his girlfriend. I mean, I'm sorry, his the mother of his child more so than taking responsibility for what he's done um, or why she wouldn't. But again, I hear I hear him wanting to. You know what? I, I don't know how to explain it. I hear him having some self-knowledge of his weakness, but not quite being ready to accept the full responsibility of the consequences of his actions, if any of that makes any sense to y'all. Let me know in the comments if it makes sense. Okay, so then we see Stephanie and Kat have a conversation. And basically, Kat's thing was, I was already putting myself out on a limb by inviting you to the party. And then you turn around and invited somebody else. Like, again, like I said last week, Kat added a plus one without telling anybody. And then the plus one added a plus one. And then the plus one that you added... It's somebody that you already knew ain't get along with everybody. Now, Stephanie's attitude was, I just thought we needed to get together and clear the air. But again, there's a time and a place for that. That wasn't the time or the place. That was that was uh, 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 Diana, who I'm not crazy about, but it was her party. And that was her situation. And she had every right to have the person that she wanted there or didn't want there. And so, for you to invite her was wrong. And, and But... I definitely understand why things went the way they went. And this is where Marie needs to take responsibility for her part. We'll get there in a minute. But Marie wants to try to act like she don't understand why, why Nicole went there with her. But from the minute Nicole and Stephanie walked in the door, you were being nasty. And then you started talking about Nicole sleeping with Lil Wayne and doing this and doing that. And so Nicole's mind, I'm defending my friend. Like me and her are cool now. And I'm gonna defend her just like I would defend anybody else. And if I see her being attacked, then I'm gonna I'm gonna say something. And that's kind of how that whole thing went down. She felt like, and that's what Stephanie was saying to Tess. Stephanie was to Kat. Stephanie was like, "Look, she was defending me." And 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 you know, Kat was like, "Did you even know the information? Like, um, I feel like you were being used. Do you feel like you were being used?" And Stephanie was like, "No, nah, I don't feel like she used me." She was like, "I don't feel like she used me at all." At the end of the day, she was defending me. And no, I didn't know that information beforehand. I didn't have anything to do with that. However, she did what she had to do to defend me as her friend. And you should have been defending me. Why weren't you saying anything? And Kat was like, look, I wasn't trying to get in that shit. I definitely could see everybody's point of view on this. Um, All three of the people, I saw their point. I understand why Nicole did what Nicole did. I understand why Stephanie would defend Nicole. I kind of understand where Kat's coming from. It was just a messy situation. It just was all around messy. Um, and I'm just, I don't know how we're going to come. I mean, I don't know how they're going to come back from it. It, it. it was just messy. It was really, really messy. Um, Michael and Marie. So, Michael hasn't been home. Marie hasn't been able to get in touch with him. She's really stressed out. She's really upset. Um, he asked to meet her for lunch. So, she's sitting there and you can tell she's very apprehensive. She's very nervous. Really worried about, you know, what he wants to talk to her about. And he shows up with flowers. And it was really sweet. You know, he showed up with flowers. And he, you know, 
basically said, look, I'm sorry. Like, I shouldn't have, I shouldn't have said the things I said to you. I shouldn't have handled the thing, handled it the way I handled it. He said, but I was just shocked. You know, I was just really shocked at the information. He was like, but, you know, I understand. He said, I talked to Kat, and, you know, after talking to her, I do. I understand why you, you know, maybe made the decisions that you made and, and what you did. He was like, I just, you know, I just wish you would talk to me about it, you know. I just wish you would have talked to me about the situation and 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 then they started he started he made a couple of jokes about the porn business and stuff like that and it was light it was really cute and Nicole I mean Marie was like yeah I was worried he was like you looked all he was like she was like because I was worried like you know I just didn't know whether you were going to forgive me or not like I just didn't know and I was like oh they're so cute I really um I definitely can respect their relationship because at the end of the day everybody doesn't have to have a traditional relationship and if that works for you boo if you like it i love it Whew. all right this was a lot going on in this episode i'm sorry i keep um having a pause but i got some other stuff going on so stephanie and nicole Nicole calls Stephanie over to the house. She's frantic. She's upset. Nicole, um, Stephanie is worried about what's going on with Nicole. She gets there. To make a long story short, Nicole was attacked. Um, she said she was hanging out with this guy that she messes with. She said when he drinks, he gets extra. He gets very violent. And he tends to lash out on people. She said she was over there, he had been drinking, and he started accusing her of sleeping with somebody else, accusing her of having a boyfriend. And Nicole was like, I don't have a boyfriend, what is wrong with you, what are you talking about? And she said that he kept accusing her, kept accusing her, and then he eventually, like, attacked her and was, like, like telling her to get out and was dragging her, and he got physical with her. She had bruises. They showed that she had bruises on her body and everything. And she was just really upset. You know, she was really upset. And Stephanie was like, bitch, let's call the police. Like, what are we going to do? Excuse me. And Nicole was like, I really don't want to do that. Like, he's a big wig. I really don't. I don't want that smoke. Like, he's, you know, he's somebody important. And it'll just be too much publicity. It'll just be too much connected to it. And I don't want that smoke. I just wanted the whole thing to just be over. I just want to deal with it and process it or whatever. And Stephanie was upset because Stephanie was like, you know, Nicole talks all that shit. But now when, you know, it's her, somebody attacked her, somebody came at her, now all of a sudden she all, you know, and, I, but again, I understand it, but, you know, that goes back to the whole victim thing. We talked about that last night with Love and Hip Hop Miami with the whole Me Too movement. A lot of times women don't say things for various reasons that I... I'm not saying I necessarily agree with, with Nicole's decision, but I understand Nicole's decision to say, look, this is a guy that knows people who's connected, who, I mean, I don't, I don't know if he's like in the music industry. I don't know if he's just a big wig in Miami. Like, I don't know. They didn't get into that extent of it, but it's clearly somebody that she's worried about the publicity behind it. Um... And Stephanie told her, like, look, you know, whatever you need, I got your back. Whatever the situation is, I'm here for you. But I'm going to give you a few days to think about this. But I'm, I really I really feel strongly that you need to, um, I really feel strongly that you need to, you know, make a police report. You need to go to the police and, so he, this dude don't get away with this. So, we have a brunch. Kat wants to bring everybody together. She wants everybody to make up. So she has Michael. She has Marie. She has Diana. She has Lowe. She has Stephanie. Well, you know as soon as Stephanie gets there, Stephanie and Marie, yank, 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 yank. And that's why I say Marie doesn't want to accept her part in the bullshit. Everybody was wrong at some point. Well, not everybody. Marie, Nicole, Stephanie all had their part. Diana, too, all had their part in that. And even Kat, because Kat was wrong for inviting Stephanie to the party. So everybody had their part in that party getting getting fucked up. Stephanie, I think, was willing to accept her part before Marie was willing to accept hers. Marie made it seem like, y'all just attacked me. Y'all put my business out there. How dare y'all do that to me? So forth and so on. And Stephanie was like, don't play victim. Like, you came at me too. And then Marie starts talking again about, well, you was running around sleeping with Lil Wayne and doing that and the other. And Stephanie was like, see, this is what I'm talking about. Like, you know, 
you know that I'm not sleeping around with anybody. And you know how that's my reputation that you're putting out there. So you know that you're hurting me right now, yet you're still doing it. And then Diana, bitch. See, I don't like Diana. Marie, I, 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 I can work with Marie because I understand why Marie's angry. I just think Marie's taking it too far. But Miss Diana, oh, I don't have nothing for Diana. So Diana starts talking about some, well, are you even really signed to cash money? Like, I haven't heard any songs on the radio. Uh, you know, she said, and everybody knows that in order to get ahead in the industry, you got to be sleeping around. So everybody that's ever gotten a record deal slept with somebody or everybody that's ever had a hit record slept with somebody, come on, Diana. But in her confessional, in, to, in Diana's defense, in her confessional, she was like, yeah, I was trying to push her buttons. And she made it so easy. <laughs> I didn't even have to really say anything. And she went off. <laughs> I said, Diana's a bitch. But she knows she's a bitch. And, you know, there's something to be said about somebody who knows they're a bitch. You know what I'm saying? Mm, honey. So next thing you know, Stephanie flipped some shit. She talking about some, look, I'm not Nicole. I'll whoop your ass. I said, oh, boy. So Nicole, I mean, so Stephanie and Diana was about to fight or whatever. And they had to separate them. You know, here comes security and everything. Security learned real quick to keep, they had to stay on their P's and Q's around these ladies. And next thing you know, Kat is going off. Kat is like, look, I brought y'all here because I wanted to invite y'all to go with me to Columbia. I go to Columbia every year to do charity. There's an organization that I work with. She was like, and what we need to do is we need to get past our own bullshit. And we need to realize that there are people out here that are a lot worse off than us. There are people out here that are dealing with some shit way more serious than this. And I want y'all to go with me to Columbia. Now, while she's yelling and going off, because she was she was upset and she was kind of yelling at them about it. While they're doing this, Michael is breaking down at the other end of the table. Like, he's crying. Like, it's you know, it was a slow thing. But you saw him really getting upset. Like, he was getting really upset. And Stephanie and Diana, Marie, they're all talking now. They're like, well, you know. Like, they, like, immediately calmed down. And all of a sudden, we're becoming friends again. I was like, what? Like, that really? That's all it took was for Kat to yell at y'all about being selfish? That's all it took? Because Diana was like, well, I mean, you know. I mean, I guess. And, you know, Stephanie was like, you know, I can do this. You know, this is about somebody bigger than me. I can put my differences aside for, you know, um, you know, for charity. And I was like, what? This was the fuck? Like, it was like, I mean, if y'all had seen it, I'm sure it was editing. I'm sure that it took a long time to get everybody to calm down and all that. But I swear it looked like boop, boop. It was like fight, fight, fight. Well, you know, I guess we could be friends. I was like, what? But anyway, so while all of this is going on, you see Michael is really upset. He's crying. He done got up and walked away from the table. And Kat was like, oh, shit. She was like, I got so caught up in what was going on with the girls. I forgot about Michael. And I got real insensitive. I feel like I was, you know, being real insensitive about Michael's situation. And basically, Michael's situation is, one, he, Columbia... That's where he's from, Med Medellin. Uh, if I'm saying that wrong, I apologize. But that's where his mom was killed. He's lost a lot of family members there. And he said, basically, there's still a price on my head. Like, I love Colombia. I would love to go back. Like, I miss my people. I miss the food. I miss the smell. Of, you know, he was like, I miss it. He said, but there's no way I can go back. He was like, before the plane landed, they'd be waiting for me at the airport. He was like, I just can't do it. And then he told a story about how his brother was killed. You know, he was like, it's just, I, I can't. And then he said, and Marie, you can't either because you're connected to me. And they would know. He was like, before the plane landed, they would know. And Los was like, well, you know, no, Diana was like, well, we can have security. Michael was like, what the fuck is security going to do? He was like, I've seen people with bodyguards and everything else. And he was like, no. He said, I, he said I'm sorry, you know, but I just can't chance it. He was like, you're the mother of my child, and, you know, I know eventually we both going to die, but I wanted to be when we 100 years old holding each other's hand. Like, I, I no, I just can't chance it. I can't willingly let you walk into a situation that I know is going to be dangerous for you. I said, you better go ahead, Michael. I I'm telling you, I love them. I really love them. Um, you know, Marie was like, well, I could wear a wig and all that. He was like, no, no. He was like, I just can't. You know, I just would not feel comfortable with you with taking that chance with your life. Like I just, he said, and I wouldn't be able to live with myself if you died because of me. Like I, I just, I couldn't do it. And so, 
you know, Los was like, he's right. He No, like, it's just not good. Like, he's right. You, you can't go. Um, so they're going, um, minus Michael and Marie. They're going to go to um, Columbia. And so then we see a scene where Kat wants to talk to Nicole. And basically she was like, look, Stephanie is my best friend and I ain't going nowhere. Stephanie has decided to be your friend, which means that I got to figure out a way to deal with you. I said, okay, Kat. Again, I respect I respect you being upfront about the situation. Like, look, we're going to have to figure out a way to coexist because I ain't going nowhere and look like you ain't going nowhere either. So they talked or whatever, and Nicole told the story again about being bullied, and that's why she goes so hard because, you know, it's just a defense or whatever. And so they came to, like, a little tentative truce. And as a result, because Marie can't go, she invites Nicole to go to Columbia with them. So they're all at the airport the next day, and here go Cat again. Don't want to tell nobody what's going on. And she finally going to say, well, we are waiting for one more person. Now, Stephanie, of course, knew Nicole was going. So Diana was like, who? What are we waiting for? And here come Miss Nicole, honey. Diana was like, look. Now, I done made up with Stephanie, but it ain't nothing that's going to make me like this bitch. I said, oh, Lord, here we go. But it is what it is. They all get on, they all get, ready to get on that plane. And next thing you know, we see Michael come running up. I said, now, I know Michael ain't changed his mind. And he got a, a duffel bag in his hand and everything, right? I said, now, I know Michael has ain't changed his mind. After that performance, he put on something with the crying and talking about people going to die and... I said, I know good and well. Like, I was like, if Michael go on this trip, this show is going in a direction I ain't ready for it to go in, right? I was like, no. But he wasn't going. He just wanted, he bought a bottle of Coco Chanel perfume. He said, this was my mom's favorite perfume. Could you spray some on her grave while you're there? Can you just, you know... Spray some of this on her grave for me. He was like, do you mind? And, you know, Tab was like, of course not. She was like, where's, you know, where is, she, where is she? And he told her the name of Cemetery and all of that. And I was like, oh, that's sweet. You know what I mean? And, you know, Michael was like, and I really would love to go. I really miss Columbia, but I know I just can't. I can't do it. But if you could do that for me. And I was like, that's that's what's up. That's what's up. So that was the episode. I, I talked a little long. I'm sorry, y'all, to keep pausing. But that's pretty much how it went down. Y'all let me know what y'all think. Drop it in the comments, please.